Hello and happy gaming everybody. My name is Darkseid Walker and today, today we have birds. Yes, we have birds. Very good. Very good guys. I know. See, so you're gonna do this to me again today? Can you, can you relax a little bit, buddy? But today we are doing we are doing the theme run for the creature. And of course, the moment I start talking. You having a field day over there? You enjoying yourself? Thank you. So the creature is basically the basically the cobbled together cobbled together dead remains of multiple different people chosen because of their size because of their size their oh, that was about it their size so what you ended up getting is this big freakish lumbering just baboon of a monster but that wasn't the creature's only defining trait because it because it wanted to be better it wanted to essentially have a soul so to speak so what you have is a is a creature that is big and tough and strong and because of its desire to be better it started to it started to grow and learn and that's kind of the theme of today's run is we've got initially someone who's just big and tough so more maximum health more armor slowly learning to become stronger hence the cartographer's quill now where we the arcana are an interesting mixed bag because the creature is a creature that has a lot of popular iterations in pop culture and not not all of them are entirely based on mary shelley's frankenstein or even anything to the alike so the two electric moves arc spear and spark contact now in the, in the original novelization, electricity was what brought the creature to life. It is what gave the, what gave the creature another, well not another, it's, it's what reanimated the, the remains that became Frankenstein's monster. And in, po in popular fiction, like Castlevania, they represent that by giving the creature electrical abilities. Now, because he's been... he's... Let's just be fair, he's just a big, big, lumbering, strong guy. He's pretty much all martial and no art. So we're just going with electric punches and a big ball of electricity. Because that really represents the all martial, no art thing. Um, spike track, it's just... It's just a, just a big track of earth that, he, that you can use to clobber people with. It's meant to be aggressive, it's meant, it's meant to do damage, it's the creature in a nutshell. Now, Earth Stomp Agent, that's the one that I think is probably the most interesting, but once again, we can draw back to Castlevania. And you somehow got yourself stuck in a wall. Good job, buddy. But in, in multiple iterations of the creature in the Castlevania series, what you have is a, is a big strong guy who sometimes throws things at you, sometimes just kind of stomps around on the screen. But one thing that one thing that many of them have in common. Let's see, where do I, where are you going to let me start? Say no thanks. One of the things that they always have in common is again I should say why why always Atlas at level three, and he resists my entire build. Oh god, that's gonna be hell. But what you see, but in many in many forms where or in many games where he appears as one of the bosses, what you uh, what he what you will oftentimes have is a flea man that follows him around that's supposed to act like Igor. So that is what the Earth Stop agent is is essentially Igor given form in Wizard of Light. And that is the starting build for the creature. Now, I'm going to apologize right off the bat. There's a good chance that I'm not going to make it to the end of the run because they put Atlas at level 3. And he's going to resist literally my entire run. 
because unless I find stuff that's of other elements that really exemplifies, you know, the creature, I'm going to be stuck with earth and electric attacks, and he's going to resist every single one of them, and that fight's going to take forever, and his stage is going to wear me down with all the poison and invincibility and all, all the happy, joy, joy, fun times. Oh, yes. We are in for a little bit of hell because this game hates me! <sighs> Alright. Alright, so what do I want here? Increase the damage for all summon arcana. Oh, that'll make that'll make Igor stronger. You must be Dr. Frankenstein. No, it's Frankenstein. Who put me on? It's pronounced Frankenstein. They told they told me it was Frankenstein. Uh, but sadly, they're mistaken. You also pronounce it Frodrick. No, it's Frederick. Frederick Frankenstein. And you you must be uh, you must be Igor. No, it's Igor. Well, they said it was Igor, but they were wrong, weren't they? I'm really hoping I'm not the only one who understands what all of that is about. Please tell me that someone else, that someone in my audience has seen Young Frankenstein and loves it as much as much as I do. how much of a plot point this was in the original Frankenstein, but part of, but I know based on young Frankenstein that one of the problems with with the creature in general was that of all the cobbled together pieces that were used to create the creature, one of the things that was off was that he had an abnormal brain. And that just made that just gave him that gave him an almost insufferable like lack of intellect and a very a very troubled troubled demeanor. I know because of that, Dr. Frankenstein himself denounced his creation, which is what which is what caused the creature to fly off the handle and just in instead of being you know this symbol of hope and scientific progress that the creature was supposed to be, he ended up just becoming a raging monster, kind of like the bird over here. <laughs> Sorry, Tisa, but you set yourself up for that one, buddy. If you're not entirely sure what to do to, in order to make things go faster, just slap the crap out of it about 30, 40 times. It'll work. It'll work against Atlas, too. It's just going to take, oh, I don't know, a couple of years at this rate. So I'm hoping that by then we've gotten a nice big damage boost from Cartographer's Quill and we've found some other things to make ourselves tougher. Super Carrot Cake will go away, but it's not going to do the entire job. Oh, you bastard. I know, I know, you just want all the attention. Now 
No, they got Igor. Damn. I was pronounced Igor. Well, they were wrong. Sorry, right, I went for it twice. I apologize. So I've seen I've seen the results we have so far for the Arnold Schwar for the Arnold Schwarzenegger Appreciation Week. And again, I want to thank everyone for everyone who's been participating and everyone who does participate. I very much appreciate you guys. So far, there's a lot of curiosity as to how I'm going to perform a how I'm going to perform a duck run. And you know what? I don't blame you. This would be the obligatory part where I go, "Hey, yeah, I have no idea either." Hook, hook, hook. But no, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. So. By all means, step on in, and we will we'll get all of that sorted. I might go ahead and buy the Relic Rewards card. Um, Gilded Helm will be good later, I think, but as of right now, when I'm still building a run on the relics that I find and can purchase, I don't know how much good it's going to do, because I'm going to be spending my money a lot. Although the idea of the creature dressing like a centurion is hilarious to me. Um, what do you have for me, sir? Um, hi, how are you? Could you maybe not do that now? Yes, you are loud. I agree. Alright, yeah, we're going to take Crimson Clover. We got plenty of things that can be boosted from having a better critical hit chance. As per usual, Cecil is upset with me for not being over there and spending all of my time, you know, petting him and, you know, basically coddling his fragile little ego. The way I look at it, taking the. Taking the Crimson Clover is a good way of announcing of announcing the idea that the creature is learning. He's becoming less just big hulking brute and more I'm going to learn learn about this. Now we've got two things that I could take here that I think actually exemplify the creature rather well. Deferred Dynamo because again it's just a lightning move and I think that's just fine. But in some adaptations of Frankenstein's monster he can be seen learning learning to appreciate life and doing things like coddling and petting birds. You know, unlike the one that doesn't deserve to be coddled and pet because he's screaming at me. I think, strictly because we've got Atlas coming up, I am going to take Blurring Falconry. Like I said, I can justify it. It's not even the loosest of justifications because there are iterations of the creature that absolutely absolutely learn how to hand how to handle animals. You know, versions of the creature that learn to appreciate life and not necessarily just be I'm a big hulking monster. So, you know, is that and you know good on the creature, he's learning. He's he's becoming a productive member of society. We're up to eight with that. Very good. Go, Igor! Igor, you're supposed to help me! There we go. Wings of Icarus. Okay, I mean... Okay. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with that. You get some health back from knocking enemies into pits, but it's generally such a small amount. Like, you can have it be an amount where it doesn't necessarily, like, define your entire run and still be worth something. Like, instead of having it be, like, what is it like? Almost like five health per per tick that you get that you get for knocking enemies into pits. 
you could maybe make it worth like 10 health to knock an enemy into a pit. That way it would be a boon without being overpowered. Okay, so what you're noticing is that Spark Contact has a ridiculously high DPS. It's a very fast hitting spell, and part of the reason why I took Crimson Clover, because Spark Contact can just be stupid. No, I'm not taking that. Go birds. Oh, no, stop. Hmm, this way, Igor. Sorry, Igor. Why do I keep saying Igor? Oh, where do you think you're going, chum? Yeah, it's right. Well, I see the Amulet of Sundering, which would be a big help. The Giant's Heart, which would be an even bigger max health increase, which... Yeah, that kind of makes sense for the creature, Giant's Heart. I also see a Fairy. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I can condone taking the Fairy this time, because unfortunately she's going to be near useless where we're going. And I hate to say that, because you know how much I love having a Fairy companion. Anyway, anyone remember Kirby 64 when Kirby got a fairy companion? Wasn't she the cutest thing in the world? For those who don't remember, well, for those who don't know, yeah, he absolutely got a fairy companion. Her name was Ribbon, and she was, although not the most useful, like, partner character I've ever seen. Hello, what do we have here? See, I love having some good defensive relics. So we will take Heavy Travel Jacket and Pathfinder's Knapsack, as those both seem like things that would inform the creature. And when I say that, I mean that I'll take this temporarily, but it's kind of not necessary. What I mean is the creature spends a lot of time traveling, learning, learning and you know, trying to figure out more about himself, because quite frankly, he was a key. He was someone who wasn't sure what the meaning of life was, considering that his own creator had abandoned him. So, you have someone who's just not sure about the quality and meaning of life. And that was kind of where the whole Bride of Frankenstein thing came in. He was trying to understand, understand the, well, his role and the meaning of life in general. And to that end, he found and took a bride. Now, I could be very off on the story of Frankenstein's monster, because, let's be fair, it's been absolutely forever, or in this case, ever, since I've read the novelization of it, but that doesn't mean that we're not working with a, with a very interesting classic horror monster, who, by the way, was, was portrayed by Boris Karloff in the old Hammer horror films. So, if you're interested in a good adaptation of Frankenstein, that's where I suggest looking, is, is, the, old, is the old Hammer Horror series. Because there, there were some very good adaptations of Frankenstein's creature there. Don't worry, I see the health orb, I'm just kind of curious. Huh? Not curious, but more concerned with filling in the map. Beautiful. I can, I can see the creature using Binary Splashdown. Once again, it's a move that's almost entirely martial. So, I don't know.
It's a little iffy, but... Oh, no, we will not be taking Surge Anchor. No, thank you. And I think before I commit myself to that action, I definitely want to see what the relics... what the relics were. Because I might just want to buy one of those. Also, I'm a little sad that we haven't found an upgrade to Igor. Get out of here. So, hopefully next floor we find an upgrade for Igor. I will take the amulet. And I'm thinking, even, as much as I love having a fairy companion, I think I am going to go with Binary Splashdown. That'll give me a, de a decently a decently strong way to get in on, on enemies, while not putting myself in very much danger. And like I said, it's a... It's a move that's very just straightforward. It's it's flashy, sure, but I mean, it's basically the creature's jumping on someone's head and just going, Ugh! Yeah, creature smash! Here we go. And mini boss time. Very good creature, very good. Nailing it. Um, Bracers of the Beast. Again, not gonna lie, not very good with this item. But the idea of pressing forward into an attack to parry it is not unheard of. Sorry about that. In a lot of fighting games, I know things like games like Street Fighter 3 are known are known for systems like this, or like some of SNK's fighting games. Like, I think later Samurai Showdown games actually had a parry system like this. If you press forward into an attack with the right timing, you will parry the attack and be able to counterattack if you do it just right. Or in the later Street Fighter series, I believe it was just defense. Or something like that anyways. I might be confused as to where just defense came from. But the idea is that with that if you're very adept at your movements and good at using and good at using your options, it was a good way to defend an attack and then strike back with a nicely placed counter. Oh hello. Alright, so let's have a look. Alright, so just sacrificing the amulet of sundering by itself to the adorable Mimic would be worth 10. But I have a good few things here that actually I'm okay with sacrificing, so drop that, drop that, drop that, that can't go anywhere, I'll sacrifice that, drop that, drop that, sacrifice, sacrifice. Someone's probably gonna get mad at me for sacrificing Bracers of the Beast, but I'm getting rid of that too. There you go, 25%. Now we've got ourselves Mr. Big Hulking Beast back. Look at that, 25, and, well, it was 16, now it's a little down. But, yeah, I think that's a big, big bonus that any self-respecting, you know, slugger would be happy to have. And with the overall speed of, speed of spark contact, that's, that could... That's the thing, it's not going to improve the damage very much by itself. But alongside a few other things... Oh yeah, that's going to be big. The only thing I care about there is Midas' sandals. Or Mercury sandals. Midas' sandals? But... Yeah, you know, King Midas, the guy who turned everything to gold. He was notoriously fleet on his feet, don't you see? Especially after he turned someone's loved ones to gold and said, Whoops! Out of here! See ya! Hey, 
take you on him. I almost called him Igor again, damn it! Igor! God damn it, young Frankenstein, what have you done to me? Igor. Igor. Pronounced Igor, damn it. I know it is not Roderick Frankenstein. It's Frederick Frankenstein, and your name is Igor! Damn you, Mel Brooks! What have you done to me? Making me forget my literature. God damn it. trap. Now, one thing I haven't seen very much in video games, at the very least, is when you see Frankenstein, or Frankenstein's creature, I should say, very rarely do you get the chance to see him as, like, a heroic character. Demi's teapot? Okay, I would have loved to have... I don't have any buff arcana. Yeah, but I would, I would have loved to have fed that to the adorable adorable mimic, but of course. Oh, okay, so don't quite have enough gold to upgrade both Igor and the birds, but we will soon enough. Yes! Binary splashdown into the arc sphere. It's very good. Been studies. 60% of the time, it works every time. You know, on that note, it's a shame that Will Ferrell was never as good as it was never as good as he was in Anchorman, like ever again. I know there are people out there that are going to disagree with me on that, and that's fine. I don't mind. I don't mind people disagreeing with me. I'm not trying to dunk on anybody. It's just, in my opinion, Will Ferrell just kind of stopped being funny after that. And you know, bless his heart, he tries, but ugh, yeah, not the biggest fan. Now I suppose in this day and age all one can really ask is that someone tries. Oh, that was just genius of me. Alright, I'll use Igor in just a sec here, but if I if I use him during this attack, he will surely bite the dust. There we go. It's a lovely two-cycle victory there. No, Ignition Drive is not really creature-friendly, so we will leave that behind. Alright, this is where shit gets real. Because Atlas at level 3 is apparently my fate. Thank you, Igor. Yeah, sometimes it can be hard to get in on on missile weapon fighters when they just when they have such an extreme range range advantage on you. Well, 
Uh, the fuckers with the poison arrows would know that better than anyone, wouldn't they? Alright, let's send in the birds to cause chaos. Igor to cover my back. Loud birds to make me completely forget what I was thinking. Yes, yes, I'm convinced that you are related to the loud bird from Dicey Dungeons now. And you know, if that's how you want your legacy to be, then so be it, but I don't know if I would want to be related if I would want to be related to such a terrible, terrible creature. Yeah, I don't for those of you who who don't necessarily remember Dicey Dungeons. Loud Bird was essentially a. Okay, you guys can all just go to help. Okay, this room by itself damn near killed me. God, I freaking hate Atlas level 3. Well, like I said, this is my fate. I better get used to it because, you know, every run, Atlas level 3. decidedly non-creature, but I mean, I pretty much have my build at this point. Alright, guys. Go ahead and go ahead and deal with that. Alright. Here's the boss chamber. Oh, we haven't found Anders yet. How is that possible? Oh, because we've only explored 87% of the map. He's probably in the remaining 13%. Ah, oh, thank you, Logic. No problem. That just gave me a really interesting idea for a D&D character. I want to create either a cleric or a mage of some sort. And is named Logic in the character's entire point, just to make sure that everyone... I am going to buy this because if what I just experienced is anything to go by, the game is going to try to completely ruin my shit. And I don't want it to ruin my shit, I'd rather win this run. Now I forgot what I was saying. God. Oh yeah, so if I decide to run with this idea, what it's going to be is a character who's, by, by their namesake, someone who tries to live their life entirely by, by logic, by logic and what makes sense. I guess we're dealing, we're dealing with a very... What's the word I'm looking for? I know some of you out there know this. What is... What is the name of Spock's race from Star Trek? Like, I should know this. I am not an idiot when it comes to Star Trek, but for some reason I cannot remember. He's not a Klingon. <clears throat> what is he? He's not... Is he a Ferengi? Hold on. This is bothering me. I'm gonna look it up. Alright. What we do, what is Mr. Vulcan, of course. Why could I not remember that? So it'd be oh, it'd be a very Vulcan like character in some respects. But I have to imagine that 
a lot of that a lot of what that character was going to make that character interesting is when logic breaks down and something weird or silly happens. Because I'm not thinking I want to play just a straight up Vulcan, that would just be boring. And part of, part of the joy of this character concept, outside of just pointing out Captain Obvious things, is that this is a character that tries to run everything very much by the standpoints and ideas of logical progression of the, of the world. And some things, as we well know, just don't conform to that. At least not in fantasy setting. So maybe a character like that shouldn't be a mayor, shouldn't be a caster then, because <coughs> casters are very good at breaking logic. I don't know, I'm still kind of playing around with the idea, and like I said, I'm not even sure I'm gonna do it. Or I could juxtaposition that and say that the character that the character named Logic is very illogical. Someone who just lives a very a very free spirited lifestyle who just can't really be asked. Um. So hey. Um. How exactly did you guys manage to perfectly corrupt the spell? Like somehow hitting me before I ever hit a button? I'm so confused. There's the boss chamber. I don't know, how would that work out better? A character named Logic who's who's very whose very namesake is how they try to live their life? Or a character by that name who is uh, who is, by contrast, very illogical. I mean, I've been looking for an excuse to do another chaotic neutral character, so... maybe. Thank you, Igor. Ha! I got the name right this time. Yeah, but it probably won't be long before you screw up again. Yeah, probably, but let me have this minor victory. knows how to fight right now. I don't really want to. I mean, screw it. What do we got down here? Um, more useful fairy. Alright, you're in. Take the bubble gum. It's a little late for that to be of any use. And we'll take the cinnamon dots. Alright. The reason why I'm going with all of those things that trigger on casting a <laughs> casting a basic is because we have a very fast casting basic here, so it's not like trying to get these things to work with with say the earth earthen knuckles or obsidian square. No, this is smart contact we're dealing with. This is this is I think the ideal basic for getting the cabbies candy items to work. The only other one that's close to as good would be ice daggers. No, I think we've got ourselves sorted now, but thank you. This, this run has become actually a lot of fun. It also it also is a fun way to announce that hey, we're not just doing video game characters all the time. I mean, I would say the Arnold Schwarzenegger poll points to that, but it's more it's less about it's less about it being Arnold Schwarzenegger characters and more about it being not necessarily all video game related characters. Which is not to say that I think that that I think that 
video game characters are gone or that they're overrated or anything. It's just... I used the wrong spell. Oh, curse me. There we go. Alright. This is an easier version of Atlas Level 3 than I'm used to. Stand there for a while, okay? Thank you. Ow. Ow. Get out of here. How dare you hit me at range, you jerk. So, since we are kind of crossing into, you know, literary characters, are there any very interesting literary characters that you think would make would make good candidates for the uh, for the Wizard of Legend theme runs? And before we go too much further with that, I should clarify Wizard of Legend characters. The characters for the Wizard of Legend theme runs that aren't also deplorable uh, deplorable characters. Is a character doesn't need to be an asshole to be deplorable. They can just be a really bad example of a stereotype. And you know, apologies to any of you out there who might be fans of the Twilight series, but I definitely say characters like Edward Cullen and Bella Swan fit into that bad stereotype of a character model. And Bella Swan for being just a use, essentially a a useless piece of meat. Let's be fair; she was there to a kind of act as a stand-in character for the audience, which is why she's just so bland and forgettable. But also, she was kind of supposed to be there just for Jacob and Edward to have something to fight over, which I'm sure is as many women would like to have two hunky boys fighting over them. I'm sorry, I feel as though that was just that was a, that was poorly it was poorly implemented. It was a poorly implemented idea. Not and not only did it cheapen Bella Swan's character, not that she had much of a character to begin with, but it also kind of cheapened both Jacob and Edward to the point where all they really were were just the two hunky boys. They didn't really have much to have much going for them other than they were the hunky boy edgelords that that apparently women want. I don't know what woman wants that, because someone like that is just is just as happy being on uh, being by themselves and being left alone to their booze factor as they are trying to make someone happy. Now, I'm sure what's What's going to follow with a with a discussion of that nature is something along the lines of, "Oh, Dark Sage, you're taking it too seriously." They were just it was all supposed to be just you know horny horny female fantasy, which yeah, I'm kind of aware of that, but you can still have you know hornball fantasies with actual characters. I need I remind anyone of some of the very lewd fan art out there on Breath of the Wild Zelda. This was an actual character with actual things things happening and hopes and dreams and ideas and by the way the fairy just got the kill so I don't ever want to hear anyone say that they're useless ever again. 
but she was a she was an actual real real character. She had hopes and dreams and fears and likes and dislikes, kind of. I might be overselling it just a tiny little bit, but she's an actual character, and yeah, there, it's easy to get some hor some horny fantasies out there of Zelda. Yeah, all I'm saying is you don't need to cheapen a character to essentially being a piece of meat to have something to fantasize about. And that's a very interesting way to end an episode, so hopefully you guys weren't put off by the, by the conversation at hand. I thank you all very much for watching. Drop me a like, leave me a comment, <clears throat> subscribe if you're new to the channel, let me know what you thought of the run, let me, if you have answers to any of the questions that I asked. Um, as per usual, I understand that free time is a commodity that is difficult to figure out where to spend, so I appreciate you coming here to spend some of it with me. And as per usual, you will see me in another video. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and I will be seeing you.